Hey guys, this is Shannon from That DIY Couple and today I am going to give you some tips about how I learned Spanish and Portuguese to speak them fluently. So as many of you guys know, I speak fluent Spanish and Portuguese. I have a couple of videos on this site in Portuguese, which um, have generated a fair amount of attention in Brazil. So I'm going to do the exact same video here in Portuguese uh, and release these two at the same time. So if you're interested in watching this video in Portuguese, you can click on that one. If you're interested in watching it in English, stay tuned. So basically, I started learning Spanish when I was pretty young. I started studying Spanish, I think I was about six years old. Um, but at that time, you know, it's like one hour every three days or something like that between around six, nine, ten. It wasn't exactly serious language study. It's like, how do you say the library? How do you say the book? Questions like that. When I was 12, my mom sent me to sleepaway Spanish camp. And that I was not excited about at the time. It sounded pretty geeky. But I got there and I really fell in love with the culture and the language of Spanish. Um, it helped that there was a very cute camp counselor who was from Spain. <laughs> and I was like right hitting puberty. Um, but I, uh, you know, I like heard Shakira for the first time and my mind was blown as this, this like language sort of became clear to me, you know, as like almost coming into focus as someone was explaining to me this word means this and this word means that and you have this moment of like epiphany where you sort of start to understand and so that was the beginning of my interest in learning another language and um, I became pretty interested in Shakira and her music and then Ricky Martin and Mark Anthony and things like that when I was quite young and I started slowly, you know, picking up the accent and different new words through music so when I was in high school, I had the great opportunity to study abroad in Spain. I lived with a host family and I took classes in Spanish and it was an absolutely fantastic opportunity to spend an entire year totally immersed in the language. And that was by far and away the most uh, you know, fulfilling and wonderful year of my high school career, both because I was seeing so much progress with just obtaining the fluency, but also the sense of happiness and well-being that you get when you're able to effectively make a whole new series of friends, you know, throughout the entire world. There's many, many Spanish speakers, and I felt like this whole world had opened up to me of people that I wasn't possibly Per, per, I wasn't prior able to communicate with. I was able to suddenly be friends with them and have something in common. I also started feeling like a real sense of purpose in life that I could use these language skills to like try to make things better in some way because it was a very politically dicey moment when I was in Spain and people really hated the United States but I found that when they talked to me and we had real conversations we were able to put our political differences aside and just be human beings and it felt like a sense of fulfillment and a sense of peace in like sort of extending that olive branch. So. Um, getting there, being in Spain, putting myself into uncomfortable situations where if I didn't know how to say where's the bathroom, I was going to have a serious accident, was the very best motivation for learning the language. And what started to happen uh, around, I would say, three or four months in, is that I started to dream in Spanish. And I would wake up in the morning and I would be going over what I had to do for the day in my head and my internal monologue would be in Spanish. And that was a real moment of sense of... Um, you know, integration. I will say that the study abroad programs, you have the opportunity generally to spend a lot of time with people from whatever, you know, college or school cohort you're there with and speak almost exclusively English. And today it's possible to study abroad in Europe or other parts of the world and have a lot of people try to speak to you in English. But you want to try to put yourself into situations where you're really taking advantage of that time and actually practicing the language that you're there to learn. So I made a point to spend most of my time hanging out with Spanish people and to the extent that I was hanging out with American people, we actually attempted to practice Spanish together, which was like quite nerdy and must have seemed odd to people around us, but it was our way of trying to really dive in head first, and I totally recommend that. After I got back from Spain, I really wanted to replicate that experience of studying abroad somewhere else, and I thought um, about learning Portuguese because I had the feeling that Brazilians were like really nice people and that the language was quite lovely. So I started in earnest learning Portuguese again with music. 
So I was able to um, listen to a bunch of music in Portuguese and then slowly look up the lyrics and start to sing along. And singing along to, to a song that you like in another language is a great way of picking up the accent and also new vocabulary. Then you can start with films. You're able to first list, look at the film in your own language with the subtitles on. And then when you get a sense of the film or you want to watch a film that you know well already, you can put the subtitles in a different language to try to train your brain about the words that are different. But um, the biggest breakthrough again with learning Portuguese came when I moved to Brazil. I was able to do a work abroad opportunity. I worked in a history museum that was focused on taking people's life stories, so oral history, and being able to get out there and actually speak to somebody and say, hey, tell me the story of your life in Portuguese was a huge breakthrough because you learn all sorts of new vocabulary when you're sitting and sort of listening respectfully and asking people questions. But the greatest lesson that I have for you guys is that language learning really happens for the most part when you put yourself outside of the comfort zone. And usually that's by going somewhere new and then putting yourself into situations where you're forced to learn. So I'll give you a little anecdote about my very first day in Brazil. I was working in a town called Parachi, which is near Rio de Janeiro. It's a lovely historic colonial town where they have a huge uh, literary festival that I was working at. And I was staying in a hotel where there was a family with three young children. The boys must have been like five and seven, and the little girl was probably three or four. And they were playing a guess who game, this guess who type game um, in the hotel lo lobby. And I saw them trying to struggle to put it together and I recognized it as guess who. Guess who is a game, if you're not familiar, where basically you have sets of cards that have people's faces on them on one side and then the other team has the same sets of cards. And you're trying to, one person picks one and you're trying to guess which one they have in their hand. So you ask questions like is she wearing glasses does he have a hat on things like that and you figure out who it is it's a good game for little kids so I saw them starting to put it together and I said can I play with you and they kind of looked at me and they're like okay because I spoke I didn't speak very much Portuguese I basically spoke Spanish with a silly accent at that time and uh, they said, okay, boys versus girls and I thought oh no because this girl was like three years old and the boys were quite a bit older and I don't really speak Portuguese, I was like, well, we're definitely going to lose. And they were at the age where they still weren't reading very well, so they asked me as the adult to read them the instructions, and I'm kind of struggling with my Portuguese or the instructions, and they all are just looking at me like, and one of them actually said, like, you don't read very good. <laughs> not really, I think, understanding entirely that I was not from there. Um, so... We started to play it and one of the very first people that we got, the girl and I had this card and on the card was a girl and she had a bow in her hair. And the boys were sort of narrowing in on who this might be and they said in Portuguese, usa borboleta, which literally means use, as in does the, the interpretation is does she use and then borboleta is the Portuguese word for a bow. But I didn't know that. Um, so all I heard was usa, unknown word. And I didn't know how to answer that question, so I just held the card up for the little girl and I said, usa borboleta, almost as though I was quizzing her, <laughs> pretending I know. And she looked at it and she just turned to her brothers and she said, usa. And I learned two things at that moment. I learned that the word for bow was borboleta, a word I hadn't known before. But I also learned that unlike in Spanish, in Portuguese, in order to answer a question in the affirmative, you don't have to say, yes, she uses a bow or she wears a bow. You can literally just say uses, like using the verb. So it'd be like the equivalent of saying, does she wear a bow? And you say, wears, that's a, a perfectly fine affirmative response in Portuguese. So it was a you know a very jam-packed lesson that happened in literally an instant that happened because I had taken myself out of my comfort zone, interacting with new people, interacting with children is a great way to learn because they will explain things without any reservation and they'll call you out when you speak poorly. Um, but these are the things that you have to do to learn. You can also ask people, please correct me. If you're speaking another language and you're putting yourself out there and you're, you're, you're doing all this, you all of the good learning that happens when you're coming to learn a language happens outside your comfort zone. So you have to go there, you have to put yourself in a situation where you're not feeling you know, entirely comfortable, where you put your shame aside and you just attempt to communicate. Because a lot of people, they can read, they can write, 
um, they, their oral comprehension might be quite good, but they feel stuck when it comes to communicating because of the shame that's holding them back. You have to put yourself out there and you have to be somewhat shameless when you're trying to learn a new language so that you can get the feedback that you need in order to improve. And when you're actually putting yourself out there, you have to tell people explicitly, please give me feedback. If I'm saying something wrong, please tell me. Because a lot of times what'll happen is if someone's attempt making an effort to speak in your language, and you can understand them at all, you won't correct them because you don't want to make them feel bad. So you tell your friends, listen, if I say something wrong, let me know. It helps me. So that's it, you guys. Those are my tips for learning another language. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. Please comment down below. If you want additional color or additional details or have ideas for videos that we can make in the future, please give us a comment. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.